wrote Penhallow in 1942. And Penhallow was an incredibly important book in her life. Uh, she always said it was a contract breaking book. That's the family legend. That's what the family always said later. But it actually wasn't true. This was a book that obsessed her, a book that she thought would be a tour de force. She had written An Infant's Army in 1937, The Spanish Bride in 1940. She had thought these were books that would give her serious acclaim, that the literati, the academy, would sit up and take notice. Um, and she thought the same of Penhallow. Freer also thought it, her agent thought it, and the book came out in 1942. It did well, but it didn't get the acclaim that she had longed for. She described for nearly 18 months after Penhallow. It, I think it affected her quite deeply. And the next book that she wrote was Friar's Child. This went on to become her personal favourite. And of course, it sold out its first print run in a matter of a couple of weeks, about 40,000 copies in the war. See the wartime jackets, which very plain, very austere, sold 250,000 copies in its first two years of publication. And so I think she could really see the difference between a book like Friday's Child, where her, her, her particular genius really had full run, where she was able to engage her great sense of humour, her wit, uh, her, her historical knowledge, her um, brilliant characterisation, and her wonderful gift for storytelling. These things all came together in this book in such a big way and, in, and, and, and the response was so big and so different to the response to a book like Penhallow that she really wrote only Regencies for the rest of her life. Two detective novels in 51 and 53 to pay tax bills, but everything else was Regency. And I think it's a very telling um, episode uh, in her life. Why did she stop writing the detective novels? I, she, she enjoyed writing the detective novels in the first few years. And then they became hard work. And she's got, there's a wonderful quotation in the biography from one of her letters, because I do try to let her speak for herself wherever I can, um, where she says, I never really enjoyed them, and, and all those clues and things, it's always so difficult, you know, making sure they're all in place. Um, and the fact was that the Regencies were her forte. She wrote them easily, and she loved writing them. Um, and that's something that she would always sort of say, oh, of course, they're just another frippery romance, but it's not what she really thought. She knew she wrote well, and she loved to know she was read and loved, but she was self-deprecating and often rude about her fans because she would have thought, I think it was, it would have, she would have felt it vulgar to have said, well, of course, I'm a wonderful writer and my fans are the most discerning, intelligent people. She would, she would never have done that. So um, the detective novels became difficult, I think, in her later life. And she did have a tendency that she could change the story of what happened. So something she thought was terrific back here, later she decided it was rubbish. Well, it had always been rubbish, you see. So she's, she's difficult that way, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. Um, her contemporary novels that you said she wanted to bury in decent obscurity, mm -hmm. are they still buried or are they in print? No, they're still buried. The four contemporary novels will remain buried um, for as long as the copyright endures, I think. Um, it has been discussed recently. She was really vehement about it. Now, she actually, she actually suppressed her sixth novel, Simon the Cold Heart. After she died, um, Richard read it again, and he did decide, and he says, that in this particular case, she'd been too hard on herself. I mean, she was only young when she wrote it. Um, I think you could also republish The Great Rock's Height, but the contemporaries are much more personal. I do think she's right. I mean, she writes herself into a lot of her books, and a great deal of her emotional life is in her books. Mm. She's very emotionally repressed, I think, in her private and public life. But whenever she's distressed or struggling, she writes into her letters and into her books. The contemporaries are very personal, and I think they're quite autobiographical in lots of places. Pastel is dedicated to her mother, and the first edition copy that she gave to her mother actually says um, whether, it, whether it makes her laugh or whether it makes her cry, it should amuse her because it contains so much that is really and truly her. So her mother is obviously really woven into this book a great deal. 
And they're very interesting to read from that point of view. I mean, they're very readable books. They're not wonderful books, but they're not. She struggled to write badly. Her, her detective short, short story, Link's Great Case, is, is very bad. Um, the romance bit's okay, but the rest is pretty awful. But she was a natural writer, and, and we, I have one thing that says she was a prodigy from, from childhood, and I'm a prodigy. She was certainly making up stories as a young girl and acting them out with a friend in the drawing room at the, at the House of London. Um, and, and the friend later said she recognised a lot of those plots in the later novels, which I think is interesting. 